Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for joining me here today. Thank you. Thank you. I know online you can't uh, clap, but uh, I feel you. And uh, today's a very important. We had a very good turnout. Um, we had a lot of people register for this, and it just shows you how important uh, relaxing is for uh, people and how many people have anxiety, insomnia, and other neurological issues. So what we're really talking about today is the nervous system. The symptoms of a nervous system that are aggravated or not balanced are insomnia, anxiety, panic attacks, attention problems, nervousness, even twitching in the muscles, um, neur uh, numbness, neuropathy. This is also related to the nervous system. And of course, there's many serious neurological diseases, including MS and, uh, and other such diseases that result in the damage of the uh, actual nerve cell, the, the sheath of covering the nerve. But we're not going to cover those today because we want to avoid um, this type of damage to our nervous system. So first, it's important to understand that there's always pathology. Nothing comes overnight. Nothing disappears. Um, and there's a path to every disease that takes place. And we're today we're talking about the nervous system and the path that starts starts like this. First, there's a little anxiety, a little nervousness, maybe when you're young, a little jittery, um, an ability to focus, an ability to concentrate. That can be the early signs of a kind of agitated or sensitive nervous system. And some people are born more sensitive than others. If you've studied Ayurveda, you know that the vata, um, Prakriti or body type tends to be more sensitive. And that's because they are um, dry, light, and cold. And this dryness, uh, when we have dryness in our body, dryness in our muscles, dryness in our nerve tissue, become more sensitive. Because just like every cell in the body has a, a cell membrane, our cells are our nerve cells are also covered with a sheet that's uh, made of fat. And this is its protection. So when you have a little fat in your body, like a thin person or a dry person, then this uh, nerve sheath, this protects covering the nerve, uh, uh, is is more vulnerable, becomes more sensitive. So this type of person who is generally thin, cold, dry, and uh, particularly if they're not getting enough fat in the diet or able to digest fat well, can have this type of uh, uh, early signs of nervous imbalances, such as uh, little anxiety, ability to focus, and memory. So this evolves over time, this pathology. If your nerves are not supported properly and nourished properly, and it's just, it goes beyond just vitamins and medicine, but having the uh, proper environment for the nerves, the, the proper amount of fat, proper amount of, of nutrients and trace minerals, they all have to be present nervous system. And if there's a deficiency in these trace minerals, magnesium, uh, and, uh, and uh, other, other minerals, including essential fatty acids, then we can start to see these minor neurological issues. That's why if we have a little cramping in the muscles, twitching in the muscles, we can take magnesium. And we find, well, that relieves the problem. Um, of course, it would be better for having good digestion and eating enough food and able to uh, get this magnesium from our food, but many of us don't have that, so we end up having to take um, supplementation, and we can see the results from taking the supplementation that our nervous system calms down, and it can even help us with sleep, taking magnesium, because it helps not only our nerves relax, but our muscles to relax. So these type of minor nutritional deficiencies are often the early stages of we could say neurological imbalances, not quite diseases, but just imbalances. And then as it progresses, uh, when a person grows up or workforce, there's more stress in life. And that same sensitive person that didn't have ability to focus very well or concentrate, you know, in this very stressful environment can start to have uh, more anxiety. This can lead to uh, anxiety attacks and uh, insomnia. And insomnia can also um, occur from 
uh, mental imbalances, thinking too much, thinking of the future, thinking, worrying about the past, fear of the future. And these are mental states because the mind is supported by the nervous system. So the nervous system, you could say, is kind of like holding the mind. It's kind of like that's my mind supported by the nervous system. So if the nervous system is jittery and unsupported and nutritionally deficient and aggravated and overly stimulated, then, you know, this is going to affect the mind, the state of the mind. Then the mind becomes overly active, overly stimulated, and then there's too much thinking, fear, worry can create insomnia. And then eventually, if nothing has been resolved, you know, at the time the person not sleeping uh, for many, many years deeply, this only compounds well, weakens the immune system and leads to other health imbalances. The immune system um, even can contribute to autoimmune conditions um, and, and more because uh, sleep is one of the pillars of good health, good sleep, you know, good digestion, elimination, good sleep, say, are the pillars of good health. So if any one of those three are not working well, you'll have compounded other problems. So sleep is very, very important and often under understood or appreciated um, and people are waking up all the time at night to urinate or waking up at night uh, uh, tossing and turning and not sleeping deep and this goes on for years and years and ultimately will only make the neurological problem progress and eventually um, as the neurological issues uh, progress then you can start to have even damage to the nervous system and, and, and then when we get damaged to the nervous system, then we have more serious conditions, like I said, ADHD, where there's a, a, a it's clear ability, inability to focus, um, like I mentioned earlier, MS, even Parkinson's, and uh, Alzheimer's. Uh, these are more serious neurological issues. But what we want to talk about today is avoiding these, because treating them at these advanced stages is beyond the scope of this uh, webinar. Um, but early signs, tingling, numbness, tremor, spasm, poor memory, racing mind, spacey, poor coordination, and of course, anxiety, and ultimately uh, working towards uh, poor sleep and insomnia is the state that you're not able to sleep. So we, are, we want to focus in this direction. Now, uh, first, we're going to talk about causes, typical causes. We kind of covered one already. We talked about nutrition um, and we're going to cover some more causes. Then we're going to talk about herbalism. We're going to talk about a few home remedies. And then we can take a few questions. And um, then we'll all relax and hopefully sleep better, knowing that there are cures out there. So first, I want to talk about causes. Because with any health condition, we need to focus on the causes. Uh, because we often forget that. For example, if you have anxiety and nervousness and sleepness, then you want to try to identify the causes that are creating it, not just look for the cure. It's nice to say, oh, let's give me a pill, give me an herb, give me a tea, give me something to uh, help me go to sleep. But it's wiser to step back and say, what's causing this? How come I'm not able to sleep? How come I was sleeping before? Now I'm not sleeping now. And, that, and then working and getting rid of or removing or reducing these causes. So let's run through a few here. Um, or stress being probably the number one, high stress life. But uh, I add to that because we all stress, we all have a little stress in our work, we all have a little stress and pain pills and staying ahead in life. Uh, but I find that a lot of my clients tend to uh, push themselves to do too much. And we have a kind of attitude like, oh, let's be a super mom, let's be a super dad, let's be a super boy, we'll push, 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 push. And I find a lot of people are creating their own stress by this uh, attitude of wanting to achieve and push and gain um, and acquire. So, you know, business people, of course, they love to make more money and make more businesses. And, and that's a motivating factor, but they're creating a lot of stress. Maybe it'd be more healthy to not have so many goals, so much ambition, try to reduce the amount of activity the day and give yourself a break you know we need rest and repose and you know i'm as many people working working, working, working all the time and you know over the years as i've seasoned you know like a good wine you know, transform myself grape juice to wine by seasoning myself you know, a seasoned guy 
have learned more mature thing that it's very important to rest uh, no matter how busy i am to always take time out at the end of the day to relax and, and try to do nothing I think very few people are doing nothing and i found i worked at this doing nothing for a while it took me many 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 years of practice of doing nothing because every time i try to do nothing i'm thought of something every time you think of something you're no longer doing nothing so um, it's good to practice that. That's, of course, meditation. Meditation is when you still the mind. You're not thinking of anything. You still the mind. And that takes, as we know, many years. So it's one of the best ways to improve your stress level, reducing down your own workload, reducing your ambition, and meditating and trying to always get away and relax. Now, of course, the other common and somewhat obvious uh, causes of this type of neurological problem, besides uh, nutrition, we'll talk about a little more, is too many stimulants, uh, coffee, black tea, green tea, sugar, tea, computers. This is all stimulating to the mind. We can just start with coffee. I can't num tell you how many people have come to me and told me they have anxiety and nervousness when they only have one cup of coffee a day. It's just one. It's just one. Uh, but uh, they find out that that one coffee was making a difference because we know that if you did a blood test two, three days later, they can uh, find in your blood coffee, opiates, or you know, or anything that you've consumed in the last few days can be detected in your blood for days later. So that coffee in the morning is still there in the evening, stimulating you slightly, and it accumulates over time. So it can take even a week or so for people to get off coffee to actually see the benefits. Um, and herbs are the same too. If you start taking a black herb every day, and at first, it's like working that good, but you keep taking it every day. Now, this herb is just pumping through your blood all the time, and now you start to become relaxed all the time, and you actually need less and less of the herb. One of the beauties of herbs is that you generally need less and less of them over time, and that's definitely the case with nervines, uh, nervines, sedatives, adaptogens as they are in your body, and they're helping you to relax and, and uh, support the nervous system. Uh, we're going to talk more about that. So it's very important if you're really insomniac and you're uh, or you're having a lot of anxiety to remove the coffee, the black tea, the green tea, um, and even even the decaf. Many people with insomnia have said that even the decaf made a difference because there's still a stimulating effect. It's more than just the caffeine. Caffeine is the most stimulating part. And uh, yes, the Red Bull would be in this category as a as a big time stimulant. So first, I would say eliminate these stimulants. And let me talk a little bit more about sugar. Sugar's a big stimulant. Just give it to, give a little candy bar off to a three or four year old kid and just sit back and watch the show. Uh, a kid will become more hyperactive and will have a lot of fun when they're screaming and crying and, and playing and getting all excited and then they'll just crash and cry a little bit and on the floor. And that's the the rise and the fall of this stimulation coming from sugar. So you should never be giving children any form of sugar. Now, when we talk about sugar, we're talking about white processed sugar. We're not talking about eating grapes and blueberries and bananas. You give a kid, you know, some grapes and go back and watch and, he's, you know, he's going to like them and enjoy them and he's going to give them a little blood sugar and a little more energy, but you're not going to see the crash afterwards. If you ate enough dates, you know, you could do that. But, you know, most fruit has has fiber in it and other nutrients. It's not pure processed sugar. Even cane sugar is not that stimulating in its natural state. And there's other natural forms of sugar like um, a jaggery that are not as stimulating. So when we talk about sugar, we're talking about candy bars, cookies, uh, uh, baked goods with sugar. It doesn't matter if it's organic bread or, you know, it's still got sugar in it. And brown sugar, unfortunately, is just white sugar with a little molasses added to it. So it's the same thing. And agave is, is just a uh, past fat, I guess, and it's very stimulating. And I never recommend it. Honey it wouldn't fall in this category. Try giving a child uh, a little honey snack, you know, and watch them. They don't have the blood sugar spike. And even diabetics can have a small amount of uh, honey. And they won't see, particularly with food, and they won't see the uh, blood sugar spike. Obviously, if you start taking it straight, that's one thing. But if you have uh, like a little snack and there's some honey in it, you, you won't see a big snack, a spike in blood sugar. So uh, sugar is a big time uh, stimulant and very addictive. 
and uh, people have been addicted to it sometimes their entire life from grandma who gave them the sweets in the first place. So you really want to try to wean yourself off of these sweets, get off these uh, stimulants. Now, I didn't say that all coffee is bad. If you happen to be in the wrong place here today and you're watching this webinar, but you never have anxiety and you sleep just great, then and you're even a heavy sleeper and you have a trouble getting up and I believe that would be more of a kapha proper to your body type thing. Coffee could be fine. Many uh, kapha people who are heavy, slow, uh, somewhat lethargic, and sleep very heavy and have trouble even waking up in the morning. And I tell them, fine, have coffee in the morning. They're very surprised. They said, I thought you would tell me not to have coffee. No, it's fine for you. Perfect. You need that stimulation. You need it to get your heart going um, and to get your body going. But you have to have it or to get the person uh, going. So it's not that coffee's bad. It's not that green tea is bad. I have many teas with green tea and elathro in it, ginseng. And these aren't bad. My weight loss tea, for example, has green tea in it. My energy and memory tea has green tea in it. So um, it has to be for the right person. If you're insomniac or you're having a lot of anxiety, I wouldn't recommend having my weight loss tea, even if you felt you were a little overweight. Back when I saw these teas in the market, who would try to buy my weight loss tea, and I saw that they were thin and, you know, really not the type of body type that would do well with this type of green tea and elethro, which is a type of ginseng. Then I told them, no, this is not suitable for you. It's too stimulating. So I have another weight loss tea that uh, helps with weight loss, but doesn't have the stimulants. So you really want to reduce that. A few other um, causes of um, insomnia and anxiety. Uh, besides these is, um, you know, our environment, uh, bright lights, you know, obviously if you dim the lights, this helps a lot. Candlelight is uh, uh, much more relaxing. And in fact, if you just turn off all the lights and light candles, this you know, really almost can put you to sleep. I mean, you can hardly stay awake when you're tired. You have that computer blazing in your face, all the lights are on, all the music's going, it's very hard to sleep. But if you turn off the music, turn off the computers, and just put on candlelight, you know, you'll, you'll a lot of people will fall asleep right then. I know that's the case with me. Everything is turned on, the electricity is on, the music's on, I can stay up. Turn it all off, very quickly I get tired. So it's often our own environment that we're creating. Television uh, is very stimulating. I'm sure in the old days, uh, listening to the radio late at night, very stimulating. And you know, if you're watching things that are possibly relaxed, Laxy movie, that's fine. But if you're watching the news and you're watching world events and you're stressing out about the politics and things like that, then you're, you're not going to be able to relax. So ambient music, ambient music, you know, ocean waves, birds tweeting, you know, soft music without a beat. This is what you want to help yourself to uh, relax. And of course, nowadays we have electromagnetic frequencies, a Wi-Fi, and, and this can be a disturbance even people who are very sensitive because it's uh, you know are finding that uh, electromagnetic frequencies just come from the power cords running all over their bed from the sleep sometimes when people say they keep having sleeping problems they come go sleep in another room and then they sleep or go sleep in the middle of the floor and then they sleep um so and that's probably because of the electromagnetic frequency uh, emanating from the, all the power have running through the wall or around our bed. Now, if your uh, nervous system is well supported without nutritional deficiencies and not overly stimulated, probably these power cords and Wi-Fi won't bother you. But when you become, the nervous system becomes exposed and depleted, then these everything starts to affect you worse. So many people just try to remove the cause, which is good, thinking in the right direction, you know, move away from the electrical uh, uh, plugs, turn off the Wi-Fi at night, uh, dim the dim the lights, and these are all good, and make the bedding soft. Um, incorrect bedding can be a problem, as somebody mentioned here. Uh, just not using pat polyester or poor bedding can, can make a difference. The room's too hot or too cold can make a difference. And we can't say what the right temperature is because, as we know in Ayurveda, many people's bodies are running a little warmer and hotter, so that person may need a cooler room to be comfortable. And other people have a cooler body temperature or kaphas, and then they need a little bit uh, a warmer temperature. So you have to get the temperature just right. So that means the, the bedding should be right. 
And I think people who sleep on soft beds for too long have more trouble than people who sleep on firm beds. Even though initially, a firm bed feels more firm, uh, long term, you'll feel better for your sleep. So um, I would first focus on those, removing these causes, making the environment right. But like I said earlier, you can't just remove the cause because like uh, the electromagnetic frequencies because you just can't live your whole life and say i can't live near power plugs or wi-fi's so we really need to support the nervous system and that's what many of these uh, herbs are doing is they're food for the nerves people think oh it's a sedative it's just making me sleep but in ayurvedic terms or herbal herbalist point of view this is food we're like feeding the nervous system giving it what it's missing and what it has as what it's missing what it likes then it's more balanced, it's not so hypersensitive to everything. So it's good to remove these um, stimulants, but at the same time, we can't just, uh, we need to support the nervous system. The first thing we can do is increase the fat level. We find a lot of people who, you know, have been on low fat diets for many years, and, um, and uh, this has created uh, more exposure for the nervous system. Particularly, we see people who uh, are uh, elderly, 70s and they have Alzheimer's or forms of dementia. And uh, I often ask them, I said, um, are you on a low fat diet? And they very proudly tell me, yes, they've been on their low fat diet. And they're still very proud of the fact that they've been having skim milk for 40 years and they don't eat butter. Um, but that was partially part of their cause for their neurological problem at that time. Uh, so a low fat diet will contribute to um, even poor sleep. And if you want to know if you have enough fat in the body, just look at your hands, you know, and you know, you can feel the skin on the back of your hand. If it's very, very thin, then you don't have enough fat in the body. Of course, you can look if your ribs are sticking out, just like my horse, we don't want the ribs to be clear. When the ribs are too clear on the horse, we know he's not getting enough fat in the diet. We'll start pouring, you know, a wheat germ oil and other oils in his grains to uh, uh, make the skin thicker to protect them during the winter. So, you know, fat's just kind of got a bad name. I think the name fat just, uh, you know, we need to, I think that's why we started calling it essential fatty acids. That sounds better, essential. But if you don't get enough healthy fat in your diet, which is what we're talking about, um, then your nervous system and ultimately even your brain will be adversely affected. So low fat diet, uh, first signs are, you know, uh, tension problems. It takes a few months because the liver stores fat, so the liver can manage fat for some time. But then uh, over time, on this low-fat diet, I mean, often doesn't really result much weight loss per se, but results in ner nervous problems, anxiety problems, sleeping problems. So in fact, almost every single client that comes to me is thin, you know, underweight, the ribs, you know, um, there, when you feel the rib area, you can feel the ribs very clearly. It's not much fat there. Hip bones sticking out, you know, bones sticking out here. The bones are, can be exposed because of this low fat. And the back of the hand, you feel the, the, the thickness of fat in the body is very thin. If I see all those signs, then I'm definitely pushing for butter, a ghee in the diet, and uh, more fat in, in the diet, which can come in many forms. Um, and within a certain period of time, we find many of these conditions improve. Another way to know if you don't have enough fat in the diet is cracking. If you're all cracking, your body don't have enough fat because fat is the um, lubricant between the joints. So this is a very big cause of uh, insomnia and health problems is this uh, low fat diet or just lack of fat. Now, of course, you can be eating fat and also have food. If you have a uh, poor liver function, if uh, liver's not working well, and you're not able to digest the fat, um, and you're not able to break this fat down in fatty acids and absorb it through the intestinal wall, then you can have um, uh, low fat on the body, even though you're consuming fat. But this generally happens to people who are older, people who have fatty liver, gallbladder problems, congestion in the gallbladder, and have been long-term meat eaters because the red meat considered the good fat. Um, so good fat's going to come from uh, seeds and, um, and other olives and uh, even um, other sources. And, and some of the best fat is actually coming from 
for this condition for the mind is actually uh, coming from uh, butter, ghee. So uh, we find sometimes people who are been uh, dairy free for a period of time, even though they're consuming fat, start to have many of these signs tingling, numbness, inability to focus, sleep isn't poor, uh, sleep is poor. So once they put on more fat, and even the thin person, once they gain more weight, being underweight also can be a big cause of, of uh, insomnia. So you'll, I have many patients who come to me, have anxiety, nervousness, and I change their diet, fix their digestion, give them herbs to relax and sleep, but, and they come back a month later, they could be here, oh, thank you very much. My digestion's better, my elimination's better, I'm, I'm drinking and relaxing all day, I feel much better off the coffee, you know, get the Red Bull, and I'm sleeping like a baby with your sleeping herbs. Fantastic. But I got a new problem. I go, what's that new problem? And they go, well, I, I put on five pounds. And I go, that's not the problem. That was the cure. That was the treatment. By putting on that extra weight, that's what grounded you out. Because people who are skipping meals, not eating, trying to be ultra thin, or maybe because they don't have good digestion, so they're not hungry, but they're remaining thin, you know, these are the people who are light, they're lightheaded, where's my keys, what's going on? And you know, they're light, they're not grounded. So in Ayurveda, you have to ground yourself. Uh, and anybody who's fasted for a few days or juice fasted for a week, realizes. You know, and after about a certain period of time, you become a little lightheaded, a little spacey, sleep is not as deep. And then once you start eating again, you start sleeping better. So being underweight, low fat, these are also often common causes. So. I hope that helped you identify some of the causes that you may possibly have. And I would write those down and working on those right away before you start taking some type of uh, supplement um, or herb. Uh, while we're on the subject of supplements, uh, uh, somebody asked here on the screen, what about melatonin? Not been herbalist, I'm not prescribing or recommending melatonin. But melatonin is, of course, a hormone made in the brain that's released to help us sleep, you know, serotonin, melatonin, it's the day-night balance. Um, and when you take melatonin, just like it's a hormone replacement, basically, your body's supposed to make this hormone and now you've taken it, uh, which is fine. It works for a while and it's very good for jet lag and traveling. It helps to resync the body. I don't think the body was made to fly around the world in two hours and reorganize its melatonin, serotonin uh, cycle. So taking melatonin can help you to recover from jet lag in particular and help the body re-regulate uh, its uh, serotonin and melatonin. But long-term use creates dependency because just like all forms of uh, hormone replacement, you know, it's you're putting something in the body that the body is supposed to be producing itself. It's, it's the same for any type of hormone replacement. We're talking estrogen, progesterone, you know, body eventually uh, will become dependent on it and that's just a problem with uh, melatonin even uh, digested enzymes can create a dependency because you're taking the enzyme that the body is supposed to be making so ayurveda doesn't practice this we practice using nervine herbs that are relaxing and supportive to the nervous system in fact they're like food for the nerves and uh and they just happen to have a lot of these trace minerals calcium and magnesium in them that's the amazing thing about Herbalism, since it's been around thousands of years, people knew what herbs would support the nervous system. And nowadays, scientists look at some of these herbs and discover that they are very high in trace minerals. Good example is uh, oat straw. Oat straw is in my uh, relaxing formula. And if you look at the nutritional breakdown of oat straw, it's very high in trace minerals and, uh, and magnesium. So. You're, pro, you're still receiving these nutrients in these herbs. So all herbal formulas have nutrients in them uh, for any condition. When you're drinking an herbal tea, for people, then there are more nutrients in that tea than there were if you just had water. So um, that's why a lot of clients I just tell them, don't drink water, just drink the tea all day. Um, and particularly if you're having anxiety all day, you can keep, drink the relaxing tea all day. So you're getting not only these nervines that are supporting and almost like healing and taking care of the nervous system, but you know, uh, you can think too, from a nutritional science point, you're getting more magnesium, more trace minerals as well. Um, so um, 
those are the uh, causes. Um, so what can we do to uh, improve our sleep and improve our anxiety? I mentioned a few. We can reduce our workload down, stop pushing ourselves so much, stop trying to achieve so much, and try to enjoy life, to relax, take time off, meditate, do yoga, and even try um, to do the most difficult thing there is, and that is to do nothing and to think nothing. And I have many clients, I tell them uh, as they go out the door, um, please stop thinking. And so you don't need to think to do life. You don't need to think to um, take care of your children, think to do most things in life. We don't need to think to eat. We don't need to think to uh, um, express our love to another person. Um, so thinking just gets in the way. It complicates and better off to go about doing your life and basically not thinking at all. Uh, would be advice to many people. You know, we have to stop the bars of thinking, but going through our daily routine and our daily life, taking care of our family and taking care of ourselves, we don't need to really think as much as we think. So um, stop thinking. Uh, that's a good step. And definitely stop thinking, worrying about and fearing the future. Nobody knows what will happen next. And I think this is a very common cause of uh, anxiety, it's a fear of the future worrying about the future and there's really not much point in doing it it doesn't exist we don't really know what will happen next so we just have to do our best in the moment and of course happiness is in the moment um, every positive feeling that you can have is in the moment you can't be with your lover thinking of tomorrow you won't experience the, the joys of being with your lover for example and the same goes for the past don't grieve over the past worry about the past have regrets or uh, re feelings of revenge related to the past or hatred related to the past. I mean, many people have had difficult pasts and it's hard. I'm not saying it's easy to do, but you know, not thinking about the past is also very important. So some people are stuck in the past, worried about the past, keep repeating, you should have, you could have, I should have, you could have, and then other people are worried about the future, fearful of the future. Well, these are just, those are kind of like mental imbalances that create stress and anxiety. So. That and meditation is meant to help you with those. So I recommend meditation to many people. Um, so we can move on here to some uh, quick and fast uh, treatments to these conditions: uh, anxiety, insomnia, in particular, and that's uh, herbs. And herbs uh, have been for a long time, and people have insomnia and stress. Uh, anxiety and nervousness and inability to focus were. Um, that's the beginning of time, I would imagine. And so it didn't take too long. So many of these herbs are thousands, thousands of years old, and they work very good, and they can be taken long-term, and they can even be given to children. Most of these are very safe. We're going to be talking about nervine. These are supporting the nervous system, calming the nervous system. Sedatives, which kind of make the nervous system, decrease neurological activity. Um, and then adaptogens. Adaptogens is a very special class of herbs that are um, uh, giving you uh, some energy, some increasing your metabolism slightly, but at the same time, uh, nurturing and supporting your nervous system. And then there's tonic herbs that are supporting um, you as well. So we're mostly going to talk about these nervines and sed sedatives because that's where the action is. So let's talk about a few different forms. And I will say that you know, I don't think I've ever had a client that couldn't get to sleep or couldn't get to relax as long as they took their herbs. Um, so they're very effective. There's really no much need to have anxiety in life if you're prepared to drink a tea all day or not much need to have insomnia if you're prepared to take uh, herbs uh, at night to help date yourself, particularly if you work on removing some of these causes that I talked about earlier. So this is a very popular tea I have. Nice name there, very appropriate. Relaxing and calming tea reduces anxiety and stress. And you can see a lot of um, common Western herbs here, lemon balm, skullcap, catnip, motherwort, lavender, oat straw, passion flower, rosemary, uh, rose petals, and uh, cinnamon and stevia. Uh, the rose petals are just that extra little touch. Um, and uh, stevia is just to make it a little taste good. But the real nerve vines that we're talking about here is passion flower. I think we have some passion flower right here. 
you could just make passion flower tea just all by itself. You don't need to buy some expensive little capsules that are all grind up and put in a little bottle and buy for twenty nine dollars. This is like a pound of passion flower. Well, less than a pound now, but you probably bought it for twelve dollars. So you can just make a tea of passion flower and you'll feel relaxed. It won't put you quite to sleep, but it definitely feel feels quite relaxing. And as a uh, uh, oat straw is also very nice. We use it also in uh, uh, blood pressure tea. And of course, you know, when uh, one cause of high blood pressure is nervousness. They now call this, um, you know, white coat syndrome when you're home, relaxed, your family, your blood pressure fine. You go see the doctor, the blood pressure goes up. So um, that shows you that the nervous system alone and your own level of anxiety can increase your blood pressure, which can be uh, life threatening. So um, oat straw and passion flower are used in the um, uh, heart formula as well. And then we also have in here uh, skullcap and catnip. Uh, if you've ever given a catnip to your cat, I always like to put a little there by their bowl. And uh, we can see the cats are rolling their face in it and then rolling around on the ground upside down. And then they're sleeping great after that. And they love it. Um, and it's a, it's a mild uh, sedative and nervine catnip. Same with skullcap. It's a, uh, mild um, uh, ner uh, sedative. Uh, catnip being more uh, sedative than skullcap. Skullcap's uh, also mild nervine. And then I just put it in some lemon balm because we know of the mint family. We have peppermint, uh, spearmint, and lemon balm. And uh, peppermint maybe being the most stimulating, mildly. And then uh, lemon balm, light nervine. So you could say in this tea, the, the lemon balm's kind of the filler. Just kind of filling it in, giving it a nice little minty taste. It's slightly relaxing, uh, but it's probably it's the skull cap, the laven uh, lavender, oat straw, passion flower that are really uh, the nervines that we want in there. I've just put in a little bit of uh, rose petals. To, it looks nice. It has a little smell. The lavender is very very mild. Lavender actually works better as a essential oil, which you can burn in the burn but heat up in the room you can have a uh, very good for young children lavender essential oil you can, put on a pillow. you can get lavender flowers make a little pillow of it very good for children if you're really insomniac it's not going to be strong enough but for children it will help them sleep a little lavender and then the cinnamon is just again kind of a catalyst herb you know herbs together to make it work a little bit better and oat straw is very mild and nervine but it's really the one that's got a lot of the nutrients that's really supporting and feeding the nervous system. Very nice tea. And many people, I've just told them that, uh, please, why don't you just sleep, drink this tea all day long? No one. Five cups every day. People tell me works like a champ. Fantastic. Whole life has changed um, by drinking this all day long. So very, very effective. Now, we have other um, Ayurvedic herbs as well. Um, this is a calming formula. And... This is called the uh, calming formula. And, you know, here we're talking an herb that's ground up in powder. And here we have um, Jadamaxi, Shankushpi, Tagar, and Brahmi. Tagar is very similar to valerium, um, but I only put a little bit in, and it's not as heavy as valerium. So it's like they call it Indian valerium. And Brahmi is for the mind, for the mind. We use it for all different conditions. And Jadamaxi is very similar to passion flower. Chunk Bushby also is like a little stronger, um, Nervine, um, and also very relaxed. So, uh, but when you take them in powder form, it's 10 times stronger than the tea. Uh, because when you do the tea, you're just doing the extract. You know, you're throwing away all the tea leaves and the flowers, let's say in the case of chamomile, lavender. But here, you're digesting the actual ground up plant. So it's much more effective and, um, and ultimately, it's it's going to cost you less because by weight, you're going to be needing uh, far less. So for people who the calming formula, generally, I only give it out if there's more anxiety, anxiety uh, attacks or they're concerned about having to take anxiety medication or they're having panic attacks. Then I would up it to the calming formula because it's much stronger. And then sometimes I just tell them, take a relaxing tea all day. And if you feel a little anxiety coming on, take a teaspoon of the common formula, put it in there. And this has helped a lot of people um, to even get off of anxiety medication. Um, and that's something only you and your doctor can decide.
client, I can advise you on that. But many clients have uh, taken those two uh, formulas, a relaxing tea, which is Western herbs, and the Indian formula of Indian herbs, and combine them together and use them to allow themselves to uh, recover from this imbalance of the nerve system. But all, always I support the person with a proper diet, getting rid of those stimulants, getting rid of that one cup of coffee a day, often having to put more weight on their body to ground them out, you know, get them off the computer at night, and, you know, little things like that um, to support and talk about bedding, talk about other little issues, because you really don't know what the problem could be cause could be so you have to if you're working with somebody else you have to be a little bit investigative by nature in your question if you're working for yourself and you you probably know many of these causes you may just not be acknowledging them and here's a tea i call brain tea. i just brought it up today because the main ingredient is brahmi uh and now there's gota cola in here and a little lemon balm rosemary a little ginger and it's a fairly relaxing tea uh, and I drink it at night, you know, because it's, it's kind of helping with the uh, cognitive function and it's calming. And um, there's other forms we can take these herbs in too. We can also take them in oil, like some calming oils here. You get, they're called nasa and it's very nice for children, a little slower acting, a little more subtle, not so strong. Like if you take this calming formula in the middle of the day, if I took this in the day, a teaspoon, I'd just go to sleep. Um, so you have to be kind of a wiry person to take it, and then you'll come down to normal. But if you're not a wiry person, then you take these, you may actually feel sedated and sleepy. But this one is much more gentle and slower, and, and it's more for mild cases for children. And you just take the herbs in the oil. You just take a few drops, and then you just put the nose there. And then the other side. It's better to be lying down on your back. And let it go in your nose and um, and that's very nice it could even right around the nostrils there and you end up breathing in those um, herbs you're still you're inhaling the herbs and when you, and you want to reach the brain fastest way it knows so that's why a lot of brain herbs from memory are often often inhaled that we snort them up through the noise because it hits right into the brain right away um, and affects you uh, uh, quicker. And of course, people who have done drugs, I believe are aware of this as well. That that's the fastest way to get it in, is uh, through uh, inhalation. And uh, that's why uh, we give it in this form. And it's very slow acting, but very effective, and you don't need very much. Very nice for children. I have some clients who say they give them like young children, a young daughter who's going to school and she feels anxious. And before she goes every day, they just put a little bit of this in her nose and they said, it's, it's fine. So young child that can be very effective. So let's talk about the next stage after, now you've got your, you've chilled out, you've relaxed. Oh, let me have some more relaxing tea too. I, I felt some stress sneaking up on me there. <sighs> Boy, I think those, those rose petals make all the difference. That's just a little touches. So now let's talk about sedative herbs. Sedative herbs are herbs that are going to uh, make you sleepy, sedate your nervous system, slow down the neurological process. And um, we have a few here we can talk about. Hops. You can also ferment it and make it into beer too. So, um, but here it's in the natural hops. Well, hops is a pretty heavy sedative. I mean, if you just made a cup straight of hops, I mean, you feel, you can almost feel that kind of, drunken kind of feeling from this. so you don't want to put too much uh, another big time sedative poppy seeds and actually it's illegal in some countries not in the state of california because it grows wild california poppy but there are countries that yeah, even california poppy imported because it's related to opium uh plant even though it uh is a different species i believe but it's a nice sedative and again, you don't want to use too much. Um, so if we look at, say, my sleeping tea, um, let's see, we can hold it up here to the camera there. There you go. We can see lemon balm again. It's like a little filler, you know. There's the catnip. Now we got chamomile, a flower. Um, and um, then we got lavender more for the taste, ash flower, calming. Now the big hitter, California poppy, hot. 
And then licorice, just to bind it all together. Rose hips, and again, a little stevia, just to make it taste sweet so you enjoy it. Very effective. Many people said, oh, I had a lot of sleeping teas out of the store, and yours is like 10 times stronger. Well, you know, they, you know, stores tend to cut corners and use lower grade herbs. That's a very important point when you talk about herbs, is the quality is everything. I mean, the formula is very, very important. Maybe the ones in the store are much more mild, maybe lemon balm, chamomile, some passion flower, and lavender, and cinnamon, and licorice, and some stevia. Plus, you can just hear that formula. It's not, it's going to be relaxing, but maybe they put a lot of chamomile in for the sedative, but they didn't put in the pop, poppy seeds, and the hops. And those are the ones that really kind of sedate you and make you really sleep solid throughout the night. Um, so the formula is very, very And second is the quality of the herbs. And unfortunately, by the time you get an herb in the store, it's probably been around for a year or two. And, you know, Nerbless is having herbs, you know, coming in all the time. A lot of the herbs I'm getting are uh, flown in from other countries just so they're fresher. And, you know, when you open up the bag, you feel the freshness of fresh lavender coming locally. Uh, and it makes a big difference, the quality. And anybody who's um, had any other types of herbs, cannabis, knows that, you know, uh, old cannabis is weaker than fresh cannabis. And it's the same with the herbs, you know, fresh, moist, uh, recently harvested uh, herbs are much more potent than the herbs that are six months old or and definitely one year old. Most shelf um, herbs in your store are going to be at least six months old just because of the whole process. So um, that's probably uh, those are the few reasons why my sleeping tea has much more potency than store bought ones. Um, and then again, I have a sleeping formula and a sleeping formula, we can see, they have the same herb as the calming formula. We can see the Jatamansi, the Tagar, Shankushpi, Sapganda, which wasn't in the other one, and Brahmi. So Sapganda, we also use in high blood pressure. It's a key herb in high blood pressure because it relaxes all the heart muscles. Um, and there's much more Tagar in there, and Tagar is related to valerium. I know somebody attacked this started and asked me, well, I stopped using it a couple of years ago. Um, it's a good sedative, but it does have adverse effects. I found some people felt depressed and sad after using too much kava kava, so I just discontinued it. But if it works for you, fine. You know, and many people are, uh, are using tinctures. Is I don't think it's really necessary to have tincture, um, alcohol-based tinctures, kind of rush into your system quickly so you get that quicker result because they're an alcohol-based. And glycerin tinctures don't rush in quite as fast, but um, I just think they're expensive. You can buy a whole pound of these um, herbs for $10, $12 a pound. Um, and again, um, for real insomniacs, the powder is going to be much stronger than taking the tea. Um, and sometimes I tell people you have to take the tea uh, one hour before bed, maybe two hours before bed to kind of start relaxing. And then um, an hour or 30 minutes before bed, you have the powder. And the powder has more of a knockout sedative effect. And many clients were really surprised. They, a couple of clients told me for years that they took my sleeping powder and they wanted to lie down on the bed and just feel how it felt to see if it was making them sleepy. And next thing you know, they woke up in the morning with their clothes on. So it can definitely sedate you. People have told me that they missed work in the morning and overslept. So. Uh, I told them basically take less. And that's the case with all herbs. If it's not working for you, you can take a little more. And if you're a big person with a lot of body mass, maybe a couple of teaspoons. If you're a small person, or even a child, just a half a teaspoon. Um, so you have to adjust it accordingly. And the wonderful things about herbs is that the more you take it, the more that will be in your body. So generally at first you have to take more of these sedative herbs at the beginning to get yourself asleep. Um, but now it's in your blood and uh, it's pumping around all day. So when you take some more the next day, you know, you're building on what you've already been doing for a while. So sometimes people do say, well, I didn't sleep that great. And I said, just keep going for a few more days. And then they text me back, oh yeah, I'm sleeping good now. And of course, for those people who have insomnia, know that once they get one good night's sleep, then that gets their body back on the circadian cycle, back on the proper rhythm again, and then it makes it easier the second night. So. You could see these herbs as like tools help you to get back on a sleeping cycle. Um, if you have a stressful job, a stressful life, 
relaxing tea is like a tool to help you to get through this stressful period in your life. And last, I'm going to talk about adaptogens. Adaptogens are um, herbs that give you energy and also help you relax. They're not stimulating. Um, and the most common ones are ginseng, and there's different forms of ginseng, uh, Russian ginseng, which they call elethro, Korean ginseng, red ginseng, white ginseng. Um, I'm using elethro here because it's a more uh, mellow one. And an Indian herb is uh, ashwagandha. And ashwagandha is a um, that helps you to have, uh, you feel energy, and but you can still sleep at night. So really wonderful. I have a tea here called adrenal tea. So that's for those uh, stressed out people who've been pushing themselves, working really hard, drinking coffee, go, 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 until they crash. And we can, you know, nowadays we call this adrenal fatigue, uh, which burnout is another name. And they can't keep going on the coffee. This doesn't keep working forever. So to get them off the coffee, Say you're you're already addicted to the coffee um, then I would give you this type of adrenal tea in the morning to get you going this says on there lower stress and non-stimulating energy it supports the adrenal gland and the first ingredient is ashwagandha root elethro and then licorice which of course is also good for the adrenal and then a little cinnamon as a kind of bind it all together um, cardamom kind of help you digest it because um, licorice and ashwagandha are kind of heavy and a little ginger Kind of digest the tea it's all roots and uh, you have to boil it and do a decoction you just can't do an infusion um but it's very nice uh many of my reviews on this tea basically are i love it i love it i can't live without it um because they could drink it all day and still sleep like a baby at night so but if you're really i don't give it to you but if you're dependent on coffee and you need something to get off the coffee and get going you can do the adrenal tea in the morning then in the early evening, you can do the relaxing tea. And then at night, you could um, do the sleeping tea before bed. Uh, another form we can take these herbs in is oils. This is sleeping oil. Um, works very nice. Also use it for headaches often. Put it on the head because you've got some of the same herbs in here. Chamomile, nutmeg, passion flower, licorice, jasmine, uh, ashwagandha. It's kind of a mix of Western and Indian herbs all mixed up and fused in the oil. And then uh, you can put it, uh, my instructions are, put it on the soles of the feet before bed. Works very good for uh, young children, um, even babies. You can just put a little bit on the bottom of their foot. They'll go right to sleep. Um, and sensitive types, it's very nice. And, you know, some people, we've even had them do a whole massage, massage the whole body. And this is very good for the whole nervous system and any neurological issues in the body uh, because... When you cover the body with this warm oil with these nervines in it, it just penetrates through the entire body and supports the whole nervous system. And uh, it's very, very effective. Uh, and it's often what we use for children who cannot eat or take the stronger herbs. We just massage it on their feet, massage it on their temples in this area. It helps them sleep. So there's plenty of uh, tools in herbal form that you can use to uh, sleep. And I hope that helped you. So I just want to review real quickly and we'll wind up this webinar. First, look at the causes. What's causing you to stay awake? Um, and get rid of all the stimulants, the coffee, the bad news, the sugar, the sweets, the eating sweets at night, the bright lights, the you know, poor bedding, you know, the electric electrical wiring if you're very sensitive, the Wi-Fi, turn it off. Do as much as you can to eliminate stimulants. In the electromagnetic frequencies and Wi-Fi is a type of stimulant. Bright lights, type of stimulant. Computers are a type of stimulant. You shouldn't have computers in your room. You shouldn't have the cell phone in your room if you're having sleeping problems. So try to eliminate these as much as you can first. That's always the first step, as we said in the beginning. And, uh, and make sure you have good digestion, you have good nutrition. You could take some uh, natural B vitamins. I wouldn't take these synthetic B vitamins. as uh, you know... Uh, year 2018 we don't need to be taking cheap uh synthetic uh b vitamins now we have food-based vitamins which are much more gentle another stimulant that i forgot to mention was b12 i find a lot of people are taking these uh b complexes or b12 and they're taking big doses if you look at the label you can see that's five thousand three thousand percent of the daily recommended allowance of b12 and why do why do they put that in there because it gives people energy 
even some drinks, like some superfood drink put in E12 because it's a quick and cheap way because it's synthetic. It's just made in a laboratory. It costs them almost nothing. They can put it in your superfood. They can put it in your supplement and uh, gives you energy. But also this is too much B12, just particularly in the synthetic form can be overly stimulated. There's many natural forms of B vitamins. So, you know, um, Brewer's yeast was an old home remedy for uh, B vitamins. And actually grains. You know, many people who do this new fad, you know, carb-free, grain-free, I mean, these are just fad diets. But when you don't have the grain, then, you know, what, what do we know? What are the main nutrients we have in grains besides the fiber? What is the B vitamins? Why do they call grains the uh, comfort food? And people who are depressed or sad, they tend to eat a lot more grains and, you know, gain weight and things but because it's comforting. And now, of course, we know this is the B vitamins in there that are comforting the nervous system. So people who uh, who do this, you know, carb-free diet, real unhealthy, fad type of diet of just restricting yourself from a whole food category and ultimately creating a whole range of nutrient deficiencies, often in B vitamins, will start to have some, I've seen it with overweight people who are on these uh, carb-free diets for a long time, losing weight, and then ha starting to have sleeping problems. You know, for the first time in life because they've depleted themselves of nutrients while they're trying to lose weight. Um, so, and then of course, uh, magnesium, trace minerals, uh, because we're having a lot of our uh, salt, it's just ionized salt, um, not sea salt or mountain salt. So we're not getting these trace minerals. The neurological system needs these trace minerals. So getting rid of table salt, replacing it with sea salt is a very good uh, method to make sure uh, trace minerals in you. And you, if you really feel you need it, you can buy a magnesium supplement. And uh, But I would buy a food-based product. Three or four companies that are food-based and we want to focus on those, not synthetic ones. So get rid of the causes. Make sure your digestion's good, nutrition's good. Make your environment right. And then these herbs will work like magic and you don't have much worry about taking them long-term. You can take these herbs for you. Um, basically ground up plants so you're just basically getting food in another form um that's just not as tasty as you know the regular food that we have but they're still plants and uh, they still have nutritional value and in this case they have medicinal value as well so uh, i hope that helps you it gives you hope and i can assure you that i had no clients in my long history that i couldn't get to sleep or i couldn't get to relax if they were able to remove their main causes and uh, take their basis. So uh, once again, I hope that helps you. I hope that helps you sleep good tonight, just knowing that there are ways that you can relax and this doesn't have to be a lifelong problem. And I hope some of the causes that I covered, you realize now could be causes of your uh, nervous system. And do remember that this type of nervous, uh, neurological problems, you know, that result in tingling, numbness, inability to focus, even thinking too much, poor memory, uh, anxiety, and then ultimately insomnia can lead to neurological damage ultimately in the end. So we want to really avoid that. It's a, it's a path. And you once you see that you're on this path to resolve this soon before you actually have damage to your nervous system, and then it would become a, a disease at that point like uh, Parkinson's or MS or any form of dementia involves damage to the nervous system. Okay, uh, thank you very much, gentlemen, and please contact me if you need assistance in just, uh, supporting your nervous system or your health. And uh, I sincerely hope it helps you. Uh, I'm explaining from the point of view of Ayurveda and my experience. And forgive me if I've uh, made any mistakes in my teaching. Uh, and uh, please. Take what you can and take what helps you to, to improve your life to natural means. Thank you. Greetings from beautiful Southern California. I sincerely hope you learned from this video and benefited from all the information. This knowledge is not my knowledge, nor is this information new, but part of the ancient healthcare system called Ayurveda, the science of life. I hope my videos explaining the Ayurvedic approach in a simple and clear manner 
helped you to overcome your health issues. However, if you have a complex or serious health condition, I highly recommend that you contact me personally so I can meet with you here in my clinic in Ojai, California, or in an online conference call, so I can properly diagnose your condition and provide you with an individualized diet and custom herbal formulas. Then I will follow up and continue to support you until you have recovered. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel below and visit my website for more information, appointment fees, upcoming events, and my schedule where you can book an appointment directly online. Thank you once again, and I wish you the best of health and happiness.